Hi, I'm Faith Haney with the Archaeology Channel. Did you know that TAC is a nonprofit website that depends on membership support, much like a public television station? If you'd like to back this unique service, please click the membership link on this page after you watch the video, of course. Thank you. Malaysia's archaeological heritage stretches back over millions of years. Sites all over the country have revealed their secrets, providing the evidence of Malaysia's rich history. Archaeology is the um, hidden uh, heritage of a nation. It reveals new information for heritage, and there's no other discipline that can provide that kind of information Therefore, archaeology is very important to understanding our heritage. The discovery of artifacts by Malaysian archaeologists over the last 20 years has produced significant clues to Malaysia's ancient habitation sites, civilization centers, and their important link to the rest of the world. The Department of National Heritage is at the forefront of Malaysia's archaeological inheritance to discover, document, and preserve the country's rich past for the present and future generations. Rock, stones, and bones don't mean much to most people, but it can contain clues of mankind through the ages. Archaeological remains provide information when a site was occupied and the way people lived. Malaysia's oldest habitation area is the Lenggong Valley, which was inhabited from as early as 1.8 million years ago. It is rich in prehistoric archaeological sites, covering the Paleolithic, Neolithic and Middle Ages. Archaeological research in the Lungong Valley over more than two decades revealed its importance as Malaysia's prehistoric capital and was part of the ancient migratory route from Africa to Australia. We find that this is the earliest and longest habitated valley for the whole country. In other words, we can look at Lungong in a modern way like it was the capital of Malaysia for hundreds of thousands of years. Kota Tampan is an in-situ or undisturbed open site that reveals Paleolithic stone tool technology. Stone tools are very important in the life of prehistoric man. It is like modern technology that is very much like our chip industry or whatever that we have currently. And when we discover a stone tool workshop like we did in Lengong, we are discovering the heart of their culture. Open sites are exceptionally rare, and the discovery at Kota Tampan has provided important information on ancient stone tool making. After we've researched into the Kota Tampan Stone Tool Workshop, for instance, we really appreciate their minds. We really know that they knew their job very well. They had taken Geology 101. Kota Tampan provides a rare example in the world of prehistoric sites where the cause and date of abandonment can be determined. The presence of ash from the last catastrophic Toba volcanic eruption in the Kota Tampan site suggests that man had to suddenly flee the area because of this major tragedy around 74,000 to 70,000 years ago, leaving behind both finished and unfinished tools in the workshop. The open air site of Bukit Buno records the earliest hominid presence thus far known in Southeast Asia at 1.83 million years ago, 
with the discovery of some of the oldest hand axes in the world, embedded in suvite, a rock type formed under high heat and pressure that resulted from a meteorite impact. Hand axes uh, were said not to be found in this area. So now this upsets the theory where we have found many, not one, but hundreds of hand axes. So like all things, uh, new data changes um, an old um, theory. Goa Gunung Runto contained the remains of Southeast Asia's oldest, most complete Paleolithic human skeleton, the iconic Perak Man. Radiocarbon dating places the time of burial between 10,000 to 11,000 years ago. Studies point towards Perak Man's estimated age of 40 to 45 years old at death almost twice the lifespan then. Perakman is very special. He lived beyond the normal uh, lifespan of a uh, person at that time. He was born with a deformity called brachymesophalangia type A2, which is rare. Uh, in the world, and he's one of the few prehistoric skeletons, if not the only one, with that kind of deformity. The discovery has provided much information about the late Paleolithic burial traditions and way of life. The Perak man was given a burial with certain rituals, the hands placed on the abdomen and shoulder, while the legs were folded up with the knees bent in a fetal position. More than five types of meat, including monkey and monitor lizard, over 2,000 riverine shells and stone tools accompanied him on his final journey. Perak Man is so special that he has been inscribed on the National Heritage Register. Archaeological findings from major sites within the Lengong Valley, such as Bukit Buno, Kota Tampan, Bukit Jawa and Gua Gunung Runto has had a significant impact on the prehistory not only of Malaysia, but also Southeast Asia and the world. The Department of National Heritage acknowledges the importance of Lengong Valley and has also listed Kota Tampan, Bukit Jawa and Gua Gunung Runto as national heritage. Recognized as an important site for global understanding of prehistoric archaeology, the Department of National Heritage has submitted Lengong Valley as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The future listing will not only benefit the people in the area, but ensure the protection of the site for posterity. Archaeologists and scientists are painstakingly peeling back Malaysia's past. Many sites in Malaysia reveal the country's rich history and its strategic importance on ancient trade routes. A valuable archaeological site is Sungai Batu in Kedah's Bujang Valley. With the support of the Department of National Heritage, excavation work started in 2007 by the Centre of Global Archaeological Research of University Sites Malaysia. The discoveries are astounding. Sungai Batu is the earliest um, civilization in Southeast Asia. It's older than Borobudur and much, much older than um, Angkor. It's a site where it had an economic foundation, uh, the making and uh, exporting of iron ore. Dr Mokta Saidin from University Sites Malaysia is responsible for the findings. Tapak ini mendedahkan uh, bukti peleburan besi dan tarikh terawal bagi lapisan yang paling bawah ialah abad pertama masih pada tahun 60 AD. The site was used for over 600 years until the 8th century and was not limited to one area. There are more than 20 areas connected to iron production in Sungai Batu. Ini pertama kali kita 
lihat suatu aktiviti besar-besaran maka kita mula mengkaji apakah bukti lain yang ada dan daripada bukti penulisan awal contohnya dalam rekod Tamil memberikan gelaran tapak di Kedah Tua ini sebagai kataram rupa-rupanya makna kataram ini adalah besi hitam mereka telah mengimport besi hitam ni yang kita jangkakan daripada sini sejak abad pertama Masihi lagi untuk dijadikan pedang India dan juga kereta kuda dan kita juga jumpa rekod daripada Arab menyatakan tiga besi terbaik dunia satu dari Yemen, dua dari Kalah perkataan Arab bagi Kedah Tua dan juga daripada Hindi Scientific comparisons are being carried out between iron discovered here and those found in India and Arabia Secara saintifik kita boleh bandingkan di mana besi ini diekspor. Ada pelajar saya sekarang sedang membuat perbandingan dan beberapa keputusan awal menunjukkan memang betul dia mengambil dari sini. So far, 97 sites have been identified in Sungai Batu, but only 20 have been excavated. Another area has been found which confirms the location contributed significantly to maritime trade in the region. Tapak ini mendedahkan struktur sini bina jeti tepi sungai. Ini menggambarkan sudah ada pelabuhan tepi sungai pada ketika itu yang digunakan untuk mengangkut dan juga mengeluarkan barangan. The brick jetties now sit beside only a small stream, but it is believed about 2000 years ago the river was 100 meters wide, allowing big ships to ply far into the interior of the bustling Bujang Valley. Gunung Jerai, the highest peak in northern Malaysia, was a beacon for sailors and also a directional point for ritualistic structures of the time. Dr. Mukta and his team have unearthed a 1,900-year-old monument, scientifically dated to 110 AD, built with detailed geometric precision. Ya, apa yang kita lihat di belakang ini, uh, suatu struktur seni bina yang sangat menarik, bermula dengan bulatan. 10.61 diameter kemudian di atasnya di tengah-tengah dibina empat segi sama 5.51 kali 5.51 meter tepat dan di atasnya ada satu bulatan kecil 1.61 diameter struktur yang sebegini apabila kita bandingkan dengan seluruh tamadun seluruh dunia dia mewakili konsep pembinaan seni bina kosmik iaitu yang kita tahu kepercayaan pada alam sekitar bulan, bintang, dunia dan sebagainya. Jadi ini memang uh, satu yang berlaku di seluruh dunia dan kita memang tidak menyangkakan Malaysia juga ada bukti sebegini pada 2000 tahun dahulu. This 2000 year old civilization has been hailed as the most important civilization find in the region. With this find, uh, Southeast Asia will have to rewrite its history, not just Malaysia but Southeast Asian history will have to change to Excavation works in Sungai Batu is still in progress. Once the area is fully excavated, it is hoped that the site will be developed as an archaeotourism location. It's very important that uh, these findings are brought to the people, are put into history books, uh, and also that we build a gallery there uh, so that people can visit, understand and uh, see for themselves our earliest civilization in the making. The discoveries at Sungai Batu have garnered a lot of interest from foreign historians and archaeologists. In July 2010, the Department of National Heritage, together with University Sites Malaysia, jointly organized an international conference attended by scholars from all over the world. It has been actually uh, disturbed, destroyed by uh, This kind of exchange is very healthy and is important uh, for uh, the site to move on, to move forwards. Excavations at Sungai Batu will carry on in the next year and it is hoped that many more discoveries will be made that will expand Malaysia's archaeological heritage. Across the South China Sea on the island of Borneo, lie more mysteries of the past to unravel. Mansuli Valley near Lahad Datu in Sabah has yielded evidence of the earliest human habitation in East Malaysia, dating to around 100,000 years ago. 
When I was working in Lembah Lenggong, I felt that there would be another centre of similar importance to Lenggong in the eastern part of what was then Sunda land, currently eastern Sabah. So when uh, excavations were conducted in that area, we found that yes, that was another centre of habitation and an important one too. Besides evidence of the earliest human habitation in East Malaysia, 3,000-year-old log coffins have also been discovered in caves in the Mansuli Valley. Another cave site housing log coffins is Agok Batu Tuluk in the Kinabatangan district of Sabah. Agok means cave in the Orang Sungai language. The Agok Batu Tuluk is a steep and isolated limestone cliff reaching almost 40 metres. It comprises of three main caves. There are over 100 coffins made from tropical hardwoods dating back between 200 to 300 years old. Some coffins are decorated with carvings of flora and fauna, including carvings of buffalo head, crocodile, house lizard and snake. The carvings reflect the myths and legends of the Kinabatangan people. The Department of National Heritage has built facilities for visitors, including a gallery to enhance the understanding of the site. On the coast of Sampurna, Bukit Tengkora is another archaeological site that has the support of the Department of National Heritage. Research has shown that Bukit Tengkora is one of the largest pottery-making sites in Southeast Asia during the Neolithic period of about 3,000 years ago. Over six million pottery shards were recovered from the area. Evidence from the excavations suggests the location was used as a pottery kiln, and the shards are the remains from pots broken during the firing process. The pottery is still made today by the Si Bajaos, a coastal society of southeastern Sabah, using almost the same design and techniques. Known as Lapuhan, these portable stoves are prominent in Bajau households to grill fish and cook rice. The sea Bajaos are nomadic seafaring people living off the sea by trading and subsistence fishing. They travelled using Lepa Lepa, handmade boats which many lived in. Archaeological find in Bukit Tengkora confirms that sea trade flourished in the area. Obsidian, a volcanic glass that is not available in Sabah, was discovered at Bukit Tengkora. It was chemically fingerprinted to Talisia in New Britain, 3,500 kilometres away. These people had links with um, societies uh, beyond the shores of Sabah up to New Britain. This is the longest trading route during Neolithic times for the world. Off the coast of Sampurna on the small island of Omadal, the Department of National Heritage has built a gallery that showcases the Si Bajaos. Omadal was one of the first established Si Bajau settlements. The gallery houses tombstones from hundreds of years ago. Men and women have different shaped tombstones. Many are inscribed with Quranic verses, indicating the Muslim religion amongst the Si Bajaos. Heritage can be found in many places, uh, not just in towns and cities, but even in a small island called Omadal Island of Sampurna. Uh, this was an important island, one of the earliest habitation sites for Muslims in the Sampurna area. In the state of Sarawak, the Niah Cave Complex is an enormous set of caves with archaeological importance. The discovery of the deep skull, dated to approximately 42,000 years ago, 
is the earliest human remain found in Malaysia. The most important archaeological heritage uh, in uh, Sarawak is the Nia Caves. It was studied from as early as the 50s and currently it's being studied again uh, by University Science Malaysia. Archaeologists from the United States excavated in the Nia Cave complex as early as 1957. Among the skeletons uh, excavated in Guanya, 122 were taken to uh, Nevada uh, University in Las Vegas for research. Um, they're still there, and uh, the uh, Sarawak government, uh, through its museum, uh, has requested us to help them bring back these uh, skeletons. When they are returned, it will be the second time that ancient Malaysians have come home. In 2008, the Department of National Heritage brought back the Gua Cha skeletons from Cambridge University. In the mid-1950s, Gail Sifking and his wife Anne excavated Neolithic skeletons from Gua Cha in Kelantan and brought them back to England. It took more than 50 years to bring them home. With the efforts of the Department of National Heritage, 22 skeletons, men, women and children, have been repatriated, preserved and conserved for the benefit of future generations in Malaysia. Malaysia's underwater heritage also holds many treasures. For centuries, hundreds of shipwrecks and their precious cargoes have lain undisturbed at the bottom of the sea. In the historical past, Malaysia was strategically located um, in the ancient uh, trading routes. So much of our country is really coastline. Underwater archaeology is important because hidden in the seas are our trading past. An underwater archaeology unit was established within the Department of National Heritage to quantify Malaysia's underwater archaeological resource. The unit also undertakes surveys in order to assess and document Malaysia's underwater archaeological heritage. Various sites throughout the country have been identified and the outlook for future findings is very promising. The Department of National Heritage is at the forefront of Malaysia's archaeological treasures. A knowledge and understanding of the origins and development of human societies is of fundamental importance to humanity in identifying its cultural and social roots. With more discoveries, Malaysia's importance on the world's archaeological arena is set. Archaeology is now at a very exciting stage um, in Malaysia. We have discovered a lot so far. And uh, we have also discovered sites that have not been excavated. So the potential is tremendous for us to develop this field for the future. The Department of National Heritage is committed to Malaysia's archaeological past for humanity and posterity.